And now, The Rise Above Show, presented by Roofing.com and hosted by Diego Dante. Welcome to The Rise Above Show, presented by Roofing.com. My name is Diego Dante. I'm excited for today's episode with Ken Younts. He's a good friend of mine. We actually both came up together in the industry selling roofs. We both came in at around the same time, and he was able to coach me right from the beginning uh, on on selling roofs. And then from there, we've actually both moved on to working at roofing.com together. So uh, we got to sit down. We got to chat about how he came up in the industry. We talked about his childhood. We talked about how this has led him to now coaching uh, sales staff to be able to improve their uh, sales tactics by being real and authentic with people. And so this is a great episode. I'm excited for you to listen to it. And also, if you've not joined our Facebook group, it is called the Roofing and Solar Community. We have about 23,000 members. I invite you to go in, type in Roofing and Solar Community and join that group. And also, if you are a business owner and you'd like to attend one of our free retreats, please go to roofing.com slash app and you'd be able to fill out an application there to be able to come to one of our retreats. And if we, if you are selected to come out, we'll let you know, we'll get you to come out to most of the time we do those in Gatlinburg and we'll have a great time, do a lot of personal development, business development, leadership development there. We've had hundreds of people go through now at this point. And, um, so, so we invite you to fill that out. If you are a business owner in the industry, uh, it, whether you're in roofing, uh, solar or, you know, in any of the other trades, I invite you to fill that out. And with that, let's get to the episode. Welcome to the Rise Above show presented by Roofing.com. My name is Diego Dante. I am super excited. We're at the end of the day, uh, and we're here in Salt Lake City, Utah, D to D Con. We've been knocking out these podcasts, and uh, and I, I I intentionally saved the best for last with uh, with my good friend. I know I keep saying with a lot of people, this is my good friend, this is my good friend, but Ken is one of my good friends. Uh, so I'm excited to have you here, man. How you doing? Awesome. Doing great, man. Doing good. great. Having so, a great time. So I've actually known Ken, Kenny. I, I've always known you as Kenny, and now I'm trying to switch to call you Ken. Right. But uh, I've known you now going on two years. And uh, so I want to talk about that, how we met. We, I came in to work at Cornerstone Construction. And uh, when I came in, there's this guy sitting up at the front of our sales meeting. And uh, he comes in, he looks real mean, and he's pissed off about something that happened at one of his adjuster meetings. And uh, it was Ken. He, had, he just started at Cornerstone uh, a couple months before. Yeah, a couple months. Yep. Yeah, so uh, so he started out there, and, and uh, my first impression was, uh, this guy's not gonna like me because 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 he kind of just you just had yeah. this this face you just see you were upset at something that an adjuster had done to you yeah life I just uh, I kind of look like I have an attitude all the time <laughs> it's just I've been trying to work on that so a little bit more friendly these days well let me tell you something though uh, at that meeting something cool that happened was this is my first sales meeting at Cornerstone Construction I had just come in literally my first day on the job and. I got asked a question that I was not expecting to get asked. I got asked, what are your goals, not just in business, but in your personal life? I didn't even thought about it. You know, I'm just coming into a new job. Like I got laid off from my other job. Like I'm just trying to, you know, trying to uh, come into a new job so I can provide for my family. Now they're asking me what my personal <laughs> goals are. I thought it was real weird, but uh, I guess I, they started poking at me. So I started just saying stuff. I hadn't even thought about it, you know? But one of those, I said, I want to start losing weight. And so I, uh, they made me set a goal. And it took me a while to get to the point. And then that's another story for another day. But you came up to me and you said, hey, dude, let's work out. <laughs> and I was like, oh, he's actually a nice guy. So you invited me over to your house yep. and we worked out. Do you remember? What do you remember about that? Um, we had a ways to go. I was like, we got, we got a ways to go. Um, I remember you working hard, and I knew you. I knew you were gonna stick with it. I could tell 
by your uh, you were going to have the work ethic that you needed to get it done. You, know, you start working out with different people, and you can tell they're just like blowing smoke, and it's going to be a you know quick thing. They'll do this for a couple times and quit. But I really felt like somewhere in there, there's like the guy really wants to come out. And I'm a coach by nature. I enjoy helping see, see other people succeed. And I was like, man, I want to like help this guy on his journey. So, um, but yeah, it was a it was a struggle, and it was. I've got a little bit more of a hardcore mentality, so I start going to the, like these deep things, and uh, I like. Oh yeah, you, it, listen, <laughs> you you had me do a plank, and I'm sitting there doing the plank, and you're telling me like, the floor is there's lava under you, and your son is on top of you, and if you fall, your son will die. <laughs> right? Yeah. Did I get in? Yeah. Yeah. It's hardcore. Like, it was. Uh, yeah. It was pretty intense, and I never came back. No, you never. I never saw you again. Um, <laughs> <laughs> But we had a few more conversations, and you, uh, you know, you sometimes you gotta, you know, kind of get on base a couple of times, and then finally you start hitting doubles and triples, and you know that was one of the times where you you got on base, but uh, you didn't make it through the inning, and then uh, now you've you've kind of. But a few months later, we were sitting in Gatlinburg, Tennessee, at the at the hot tub, yep, at a company retreat, and you guys had like a hardcore intervention with me. That's right. And you said. Yo, you, it, it's, it's gone too far. Like, you got to quit. And that's when all this started. That's when truly when it started, yep. right? Yep. And so six weeks later, I had lost 20 pounds, you know, and from there it's, uh, you know, it's been, you know, we've been, we've been at it, you know, losing more weight and doing these crazy challenges. And we're doing Fearless 44 right now. That's right. So I think that I think that uh, where you were at the first time that we talked and you came over to my house, your mind had made the decision that you were going to make changes, but your heart hadn't done it yet. And sometimes your mind plays tricks on you, and you can kind of have ups and downs. And you're you're a victim of how well things other things are going on, whether you're going to stick to things or whatever. And so you just wasn't quite there with your whole you know everything. And once your heart and your soul got into it, which I think happened at the hot tub intervention. Um, and that's when the true changes came out. But I could tell early on there was a fire in there. We just had to kind of stoke it a little bit more. And then from, you know, when I started at Cornerstone, uh, one day another big thing that happened was I was struggling first couple of weeks getting in to get my, you know, to figure out the whole, you know. Door knocking. Uh, door knocking because I, you know, I hadn't done, I hadn't sold roofs before door to door. So I was trying to figure it out on my own and, watching some videos online and and I, I can figure it out yet so uh you took me out and for like half the day yeah. and we signed like three deals that day it like by noon yeah. yeah yeah and something really cool too was we signed them and i was just expecting this is great experience like i'm getting i'm just getting all this in and and uh you said uh Basically, you let me keep the deals. Yeah, yeah. At least two of the deals, I think. Yeah, two of the deals, yeah. We, I, and I told him, I said, look, man, um, this, he's gonna, Diego's going to be your project manager. Um, so you can still reach out to me, but Diego's your guy. Yeah. And so we just handed it off, man. I want to see you succeed. Yeah. And I know how it is to be out there early on and, and have that pressure when you first – I just – like this was my first time ever being strictly commissioned in my life, and I was 49 years old. And so there was like, I, I know that pressure, bro. Like, um, and I could see you wearing it. And I knew that if you were wearing that pressure on every door that you went to, um, it was going to bring you down. Because that added pressure is just something else that's going to make you force the sale and force the conversation and, and try to become somebody other than yourself. So I know if you could get a couple of roofs under your belt and you know that you got money on the way, then you can kind of settle down and not worry so much and just go out there and let yourself just be. In, in the moment, in the conversation without that pressure. And something really cool too was, that stuck with me was we went to knock that first door and you looked at me and you said, I'm about to sell these people a roof and they don't even know it yet. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, I think, and I love the, uh, the confidence. Um, where does that come from? First of all, I think in sales in general, your confidence is the most important key to, to it. I mean, that's, that's the number one thing because the customer has got to be confident in you. If you're not confident in yourself, then what are they buying? It doesn't matter what the sale services or the product, they're ultimately purchasing the person that's standing in front of them. 
I mean, especially when you're the away team, you're at their house. Like they were just watching TV, chilling, not thinking about whatever you're trying to sell them. So you are completely at a disadvantage. So you have to really, it's not like they came to Best Buy and they were wait, they were coming to talk about TVs and you're the TV guy coming up. Like you're the away team in this situation. So I feel like confidence, just standing there and being confident is your number one priority in sales. And so um, as far as where it comes from, man, I, my, like going back to my, uh, my early childhood, you know, I came up, I was always kind of like the minority. I was, you know, the only white kid maybe in my classroom, the only white kid in the neighborhood, um, sometimes one of four or five in the school. Um, we lived in a lot of low income situations, so we moved around a lot. Um, he was evicted seven times, never went to the same school back to back until years, until 10th and 11th grade. So I was always the away team. You mean, I was always the guy that walked into the room and had no friends in there, and I had to make friends instantly. Like, every time I got on a bus, man, it's new kids, and you got to make new friends and new connections. So when I got in the door knocking, little did I know that what better training would you have had in your lifetime than from your entire school years to be constantly, you know, having to create these new relationships out of nothing. Like you just have to relate. And that's why sports became so big to me because if you're good at sports, you, that's an easy way to relate as soon as you walk into school, right? So usually when I came in, new kid, I'm carrying a basketball like on the bus, you know what I mean? So it was just my way to connect, but I always, and you better have confidence. Like if you're the new guy, you know, you don't want to be the, the new guy with no confidence because you're going to get tested pretty regularly, right? So just kind of walking in the room and kind of having that confidence and that kind of that look on my face that you saw, um, that was just a self-defense thing. Like, it's just like you have to portray that when you're always a new guy. But as far as building the relationships and stuff, man, um, when I knock on doors, man, you don't know if a 75-year-old man's going to answer the door or a 23-year-old woman. Like, you don't know who's going to answer the door. But I guess I was always – figured out really quick that I was abnormally confident <laughs> to whoever op opened the door. So to me, like initially I'm looking around saying, dude, why aren't y'all all signing three roofs a day? Like I don't understand what, you know, what's the big deal? This is easy. And then I realized, man, this isn't easy for everybody. And I tried to identify like, well, why is it easy for me? And it's just from all those hardships. And I think from all the hardships, it, the good that came out of that is my ability to connect with people. And then when I accompany that with, um, Coming up, like I said, sports was big to me. So a lot of the best, like, hugest influences in my life um, and positive influences came from my coaches. So I knew very early on that I wanted to be a coach. Um, that was important to me. Money or whatever, I didn't really care about that. I just wanted to coach because I knew the, a lot of those kids were probably going through the same things that I went through and use sports as a way to connect to kids. And so I did that for years. So I ended up coaching 78 sports teams in five different sports. Um, spent 18 years coaching high school football, middle school basketball, um, and then always just different sports, soccer, baseball. So I think that, that when you accompany my ability to, to uh, knock doors and connect with people, with once I realized, man, I'm almost 50, I don't want to keep getting on these hot roofs and these cold roofs. Like I want to leverage my ability to train this and coach it. So I really started paying attention to details of what I was doing and, and how I could coach that. And so that's when all the coaching history kind of played in and those two things partnered to where I could create this sales course. Yeah, so let's talk about that. So you've started, uh, you've created this new sales course that uh, either is out now or will be out soon here by the time that this uh, comes out. Um, let's let's talk about that. What is what is it? What are you? You know, what what's your mission with what you're trying to do here with this course? The way I describe Be Real and like my mission statement is that I'm gonna show you how to have comfortable conversations that lead to valuable relationships. And I chose those words very carefully. Because there's a difference in a conversation and a comfortable conversation, right? I use a lot of analogies. I want the client to feel comfortable. I want them to understand the process and the different steps that we're going to go through. And so I use a lot of analogies to where it brings them back in something they might not be comfortable in. But if I can find something that they are comfortable in and they can see a parallel, then it just kind of de-escalates everything and keeps them comfortable. And so... I've got a series of things that I teach and show you how to do that and try to keep everything kind of chill and um, comfortable. And then the value relationships, I talk all the time about getting value out of every conversation, every relationship. So um, I talk in depth about that during the course 
and whenever I uh, kind of get into like the conversations, I've had several conversations here with sales managers and a few owners, and um, they're like stoked because it's things they've not heard before. They're like, really, man, I didn't think about it like that. So it's just a different mentality. Um, man, spend a little bit more time developing relationships. Um, even if you can't harvest right now today, plant a seed. You know what I mean? And so I'm all about getting value from from every conversation. And real is an acronym outside of just the term be real. Like, you know what I mean? That's just something we say all the time. And it's just basically saying be yourself. Um, You can go buy all kind of courses and learn all kind of pitches and all these different things. But ultimately, if you do that, you're going and trying to pretend like you're somebody else. Like that works for them because that's them. You know what I mean? And I'm not saying it doesn't work for them and maybe some personalities like them, but what I try to show you is it's okay to be you. Lamar Jackson can play quarterback. He's a really good quarterback. He can't play like Tom Brady. Tom Brady, if he tried to play like Lamar Jackson, he wouldn't make it through a quarter of football. Like, these guys are very unique in what they do, but they're also very effective. So that's what I try to coach, you know, in my guys is is be yourself – but let's, let's learn to operate within this structure and kind of hit these benchmarks within that. And, and that way, every conversation, you'll be able to leverage just by your confidence and how you bring value and trust into it. All right. Let me ask you a series of rapid fire questions that I ask everyone. Okay. So the first question is, you know, this is the Rise Above show. We're going to talk about, you know, helping people level up in their businesses, but also in their in their lives. And so my first rapid fire question is, what is a failure that you have had and how are you able to rise above from that? Now, this could be a failure in your business, in personal life, as a leader. Um, well, man, there's, there's a lot of failures. I'm 51 years old, so there's been a lot of failures. And I've, rose above, I've risen above them to get to where I'm at now. But um, I will tell you a quick story that, uh, that will... Um, kind of paint a picture hopefully um, you can kind of see where how far I've come in a relatively short period of time but I'd one sold sold the most roofs in a short period of time or whatever and won a trip to Key West and it was my first year you know out door knocking I was 10 months in but honestly like two of those months I'd came out to do like commercial training so I wasn't really on doors so really I'm eight months into what would be my career of door knocking and um we go down to key west and i literally watched my wife for 33 years moving out of my house on my home cameras right and um when i say i checked out five six days later um i had written letters to each one of my three kids and um, i was ready to take my life in that same weight room where you were struggling to do a plank i was probably five feet from that very spot with a loaded 357 in my mouth so if you want to know that's as far down as you could go that's as much of a failure as i could feel like i could possibly be and um two days later um my cornerstone team hunter's company the guys you know that that were part of my truly a family atmosphere there you know that you've experienced it we're experiencing now the roofing.com it's a family those guys wouldn't let me stay home they're like guys um i mean they're like if we got to hog tie you we're dragging you to roofcom and you're coming out to Houston. So Terrell um, came by, scooped me up. He didn't have to hog tie me. Um, I, I jumped in the truck and we rode to Houston. And um, from there, actually, Sam Taggart called me out with a couple other uh, who each company kind of said who their best guy was. My team sent me up there and um, he started throwing objections, man. And he called me out first, gave me a really tough objection. Dude, I'm checked out. Like, literally, at this point, I didn't want to be alive. I didn't want to, like, I. You know, I just wasn't functional, man. And um, I pretty much destroyed the objections. <laughs> he gave me a couple of pretty tough ones. Um, and my guys went crazy because they knew my mentality, like where I was in my life. And for me to stand up in front of them and do that, um, it was a big con- – like it was where everything turned for me. Like that was the moment that I realized, man, I am different. I do have value. Um, if I can do something like this, as much pressure as I felt. I felt – 10 times the pressure in that moment than I did knocking my first door. And there's a hell of a story behind my first door too. But um, that moment I realized, man, I've got to, uh, now I know that I have a purpose. Like this is, it kind of started coming together for me. And um, I, you know, like I said, now I'm where I'm at. You know, I've built out this course. 
Um, Hunter was a big part of that. He's like, man, you need to build out a course. And I said, he said, what are you doing different? Because uh, our guys were going back to him saying, man, you got to stop buying training and just let everybody work with Kenny. And um, he said, so what do you, he called me and said, what are you doing different? Like, you watched all the training, what are you doing? I said, man, I'm just having conversations. And he kind of laughs. He says, that's not scalable. Like, we, <laughs> we can't just say have conversations, right? So I, I spent the next six, seven months formulating the actual, the actual course and um, honing it in. And now i got like two and a half hours of material. I've went and trained some companies already, getting great feedback. And that's the comeback. Like, it was from this really, really dark place, man, to where now I feel like, I, I mean, I'm totally transparent. I feel like God has prepared me for this. And there's two reasons why I believe that. Number one, why would all that pain of always being a new kid, always being outcast, always being the away team, like why would that like why would that be part of my life story? Like whenever I match that up with the ability to knock doors and, and make a living and have the ability to go out and make ten thousand dollars in one day, like it doesn't make the pain worth like it, but it actually justifies it. It says, okay, this is why this happened. You know what I mean? And then the second piece of that is Man, I've trained a lot of sales teams, and a lot of the top guys come to me afterwards, and they're like, man, I sell just like that. I just didn't know how to teach it. You know what I mean? So now, why did I have this passion for coaching? Why did I coach 78 sports teams and sacrifice making a lot more money and a lot better careers so that I could be off every evening so I could go coach these kids? Like, literally, when the coaching comes together with the ability to create relationships and always be in the way team on somebody's doorstep, like those two things came together and it just gave me the confidence and it gave me a clear vision of why all these things have happened and how I got to this point. So I don't know if that answers the question, but. Um. <laughs> no, it was great. I mean, I appreciate you sharing that story, man. Uh, um, let me ask you two more rapid fire questions and then we'll, we'll uh, finish it up. So the second question is, how will you know that you've succeeded in business? I, I, I'm kind of like, uh, I believe it's impact over income. So there's not really a number to put with that. Um, impact, I could sit and tell you stories about throwing touchdowns and doing all these great things when I played. But the thing that made me feel the best out of all my, any sports stories that I have or anything is about coaching a 10th grade kid that had to step in onto a varsity night on a Friday night and throw a touchdown because he made the right read and went through his progressions the way we coached him. And he had only played JV before that night, and he has, like, all this pressure. The ability to coach and impact that kid was, like, more important than everything I had done previously. And I feel that way in business or whatever it is. The reason I'm so passionate about coaching um, and teaching my system is because I know it's going to make an impact. So without putting a number on or anything like that, it's more about – making sure that I impact as many people as I can. So that's that's how I how I de- kind of identify my success. And the last question is, what is a book that's changed your life? Wow. Besides the Bible, um, I'm going to say uh, Can't Hurt Me by David Goggins. It's my favorite book. I've read it three times, dude. I can't, I mean, it's uh, just his mentality. And um, I don't know, it's just... Uh, I'm pretty sure I lost five pounds just reading that book. <laughs> yeah, there's no doubt. The guy's hardcore. I mean, when he talks about the cookie jar, you know, finding the cookie jar, you know, moments and, and uh, kind of pulling us from those small victories, um, you know, you have to do that. Like, if you come up the way I did, man, I don't have the nicest clothes. I don't have the nicest shoes. I don't have, you know, I got rips in my jeans. You know what I mean? Like, my, my pants are two inches too short. You know what I mean? Like, it's all these things. So the small victories was I could, yeah, but I could beat everybody in basketball. You know what I mean? Like, I found, like, the small things, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and so, you know, I've really related with, you know, his story. And am I nearly as hardcore? Obviously, I'm not nearly as hardcore as that guy. But I think the drive um, and the, uh, the not giving up and uh, you're not going to defeat me and just uh, walk into a room and just have the confidence and everything, I think that's that guy who loses that. He oozes it. And um, – you know, it just kind of confirmed for me how much you can can like when he talks about that first race when he's got blisters on his feet and he just bought crackers and Gatorade at Walmart. Like it's like he's wearing tube socks. Yeah, it's yeah. like 
this guy, man, that's freaking awesome, man. So even at 50 years old, now 51 years old, I'm just now getting into this training game and coaching game. But um, I think my cookie jar moments, I have enough victories where I feel confident and I know that uh, it's going to be successful. I know there's too many people this can impact and can change their lives. And I remember Hunter told me, he says, man, it's, it's, it's your responsibility to get out there and teach this. Man, there's people that need to hear this. And so whether it be my story, um, you know, some of the stuff I just shared with you, the personal stuff, or the actual content of my, of my course, either way I think there's value that needs to get out to people. So that's, that book just kind of reinforces, and, you know, anytime I start feeling a little bit sorry for myself, dude, read it. go watch a five-minute, three-minute clip of David Goggins on YouTube. My favorite uh, part of that book is in the beginning, before the book even starts, where he says, and I've shared this on the podcast at least once before, but he says, if this book motivates you to do anything, I have failed. Because motivation is crap, and you, a motivated person's going to wake up, and they say, you know, they're mo- they watch a video, and they say, all right, I'm motivated to go outside, and they're going to go run. And they open up the door, and it's cold outside, and they'll shut the door. <laughs> and uh, a person that is driven and that is obsessed is going to is going to uh, realize that it's cold outside, and they're going to go put on a jacket, and they're going to go run, right? That's right. So it has to come from within, where that motivation comes from an external place. Um, so we got to wrap up. We're up on time. But I appreciate you coming up on appreciate the show. You. And uh, I'm sure we'll see you again on the show because yep. uh, we work for the same company now <laughs> again. Right. But uh, with that, we're going to sign off. And you've had it here. Uh, you've heard it here. Ken Younce, check him out. Be Real Training. And with that, we'll sign out. Peace out. <laughs>